This is the Haygate Estate. It housed 1,200 council families but was deemed non-viable and demolished last year. The Haygate Estate is part of a £3 billion grand regeneration of Elephant and Castle. Aylesbury Estate, just down the road, is one of the largest council estates in Europe and is next in line for demolition. Jerry Flynn and his family used to live on the Haygate until they were moved off to make way for the demolition. Southwark Council had promised Haygate residents that they would be moved onto new homes called early housing sites. So when was the realisation that what you had been promised initially had been broken? I think we all came to the realisation at different times. <laughs> I mean, the big realisation was in 2007. I think when Southwark Council says, right, you've got to move out, and they hadn't built any of the early housing sites, I think everybody realised then they'd been stuffed, frankly. Social housing does not make the developer money. And so on the Haygate Estate, where we had 1,200 council homes, we are only going to get 79 social rented homes. And that's when they're doubling the amount of homes they're building on the estate. It is something that I look upon, and I think a lot of other people do look upon, as the beginning of a regeneration in which we have no part. Yeah, I think you can see over here a great pile of rubble just behind those trees there. I, I think that might have been once where I lived. I mean, some people seem to think that it's all, all to the goods, you know, that pretty ugly place. Knock it down, you're doing everybody a great favour. But obviously, if these are homes where people lived and they were the only homes that they could afford, you're doing nobody a favour. After receiving a compulsory purchase order, the Haygate leaseholders were forced to move out and buy elsewhere. These lines represent where each leaseholder household moved to. The money they received for their homes was not enough to buy in the local area, so they were pushed further out of London. Southwark Council said the economic downturn had a huge impact on the speed with which they could complete the new housing sites. They say, Thousands more homes of every kind and of the highest quality will replace and exceed what existed before. I managed to get an appointment with the head of the London Assembly at City Hall. Darren Johnson is leading an investigation into the council estate demolitions. We're there to hold the mayor to account and to speak up for Londoners. Boris has said that in order to solve the housing crisis, we need to build more homes. That has now become almost part of the rhetoric to justify regeneration of London housing estates. Well, the mayor has taken a totally simplistic approach. He said it is just a matter of supply and demand and that all you need to do is build, build, build. It doesn't matter what type of housing you're building, whether it's luxury apartments that only oligarchs and billionaires can afford or council housing, whatever. You just need to get the numbers up and, and that will solve. The, that will solve the problem. Sadly, it's not the case at all. We can't just build our way out of this problem. We need to ensure that we have the right sort of housing and that we also put in place other measures as well, like um, introducing rent controls in the private rented sector, which could help protect, um, protect tenants there. We are seeing some perverse decisions actually in terms of um, estates, that perfectly viable, serviceable estates um, that get demolished as part of some regeneration um, project. I really do see it as a sort of social cleansing really. So if we take for example what's happened on the Haygate estate, promises were broken. It's just an, an absolute outrage. I, I, I just think it's one of the worst examples of what's happening to social housing here in London. I found a couple of adverts for Haygate estate, renamed Elephant Park being advertised in Asia. Developers will often advertise developments abroad off plan in order to finance the rest of the construction. A lot of these properties are being bought not to live in, but as investments by people, rich people, all over the world. We need investment into the United Kingdom, but investing in homes and then keeping them lying empty when a homeless family could be using it, that's a disgrace. The Haygate is one of many regeneration estates. Right now, there are over 70 housing struggles happening all over London. One of those is West Hendon. Eighty-five-year-old Rini has lived on West Hendon Estate for over 30 years and has been served with a compulsory purchase order. That means she has no choice but to move out. 
So your mum's been told that she needs to leave and move out next year, without a choice? Without a choice, yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the old lady next door, they've been here for years, and, and both of them have said, we want to die here. This is our home. We want to die here. And of course they do. You know, they've got the com community that looks after them. They had, a lov they had a lovely outlook before they started building out there, and all you can see is wooden fences up there, so you can't actually see anything. You've got all day long lorries coming back and forwards, and this is what she's got to, you know, not only her, but everyone around here have had to put up with. I've been very depressed because sometimes I sit here and think of nothing else. At my age, to up and go somewhere else. It's really heartbreaking. People don't know anybody. I've got to go into a different world. And don't know anybody. Don't know what the place will be like. I'm fighting for my mum and I'm fighting for everyone else on this estate. Oh, actually, I'm fighting for everyone that lives on a council estate and is going through this at the moment. Yeah, we're all fighting for each other and that's the way it should be. How do you think it's best to fight? Hit them where it hurts, in the pocket. That's the best way. Stop the work going on, it's costing them money. No lorries can come in and out, it's costing them money. What are you doing today? I will be de-locked to the gates of the building sites by the neck. I don't know how long for or what it's going to be like, but it should be fun. With the others distracting security, Glynis gets ready to lock herself to the gate. All right, it's good, it's good, we're good to go. Right. The police turn up, but the key has disappeared. All across London, people have been invigorated with an activist spirit, from the Radical Housing Network right through to people that have never associated with that term before. I go take the bus past the Haygate Estate every day for a year, um, and I just got incredibly depressed about it. Selling off public land is irreversible. It's going to rocket in price as soon as it's sold. It's an agenda to uh, have a London that's a, li a little bit less rowdy, but monocultural in a way. Back in East London, a group of mums, the Focus E15 campaigners, fight an eviction notice served by the council. Today is the final hearing. There's already a lot of people gathering. It's only 9.30 in the morning, and I imagine it's going to get a lot busier. Go mummies. After a long and heated debate, the council agreed to allow the mums to leave peacefully on their own terms. The mummies had pulled off a huge feat. They'd successfully put a social agenda that people could identify with into the limelight. This is the beginning of the end of the housing crisis. All of a sudden, every media outlet wanted to talk about the thing that had been going unnoticed for years. It felt like something big, and ordinary people are leading the fight back. Here to stay! Here to fight! I'm not going anywhere, so hey. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. If I do actually get nicked, please someone go and tell my mum about the baby. When we put profit over people, it has huge and catastrophic effects on people's lives. I really think the idea of social was lost long ago in the 80s. And if regeneration is going to happen, then we need to make sure that councils, developers and central government are taking responsibility and that regeneration is about the residents that already live there. Otherwise, who is regeneration really for? It's really quiet and like quite ghosty, isn't it? It's really creepy. I feel like I'm in like Blair Witch Project or something. Someone's gonna jump out. Ta da!